What? You're not like. Yeah, I am. No. I know I'm like. <laughs> Let's not have any stress on Saturday. Right. Really? Why not? Hey, he's at the gym. Gym is a place to go in the summertime, that is for sure. Ah. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy! What is going on, what is going on? Hello, first time on here. Well, thank you, we hope you enjoy the show today. You tuned in for a special show, which is What's part up, of our continuing series. I'm talking about DSP. Yeah. So last week, of course, we were magically off. That was wonderful. It's hard to believe that was just last week. You know, it's hard to believe that we had three days off in a row and it wasn't like, you know. And that was so quick. Yeah. Like just like, boom. Yeah, it was gone. over. So that was yeah. a lot of fun there. But we're back at it. What's up, Texas? Texas? What's up, Denver? We'll be in Texas Southern in August. New Jersey? So we'll be in Dallas in August. Ohio. It'd be kind of neat to do a meetup. Well, if, if there's you, enough people. Yeah, if we'll you, one Omni. of you guys are in Texas, uh, Dallas, actually, Dallas. Yeah, we'll be in Dallas at the Omni. Be in the, yeah, we're Thursday, gonna be Friday, there. Saturday. Um, we're we'll going to be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yep. What is that, July, August? That's, uh, July 3rd? Eight, no. 8 through, eight through the 12th. 8 through the 11th. What's our rover? Yeah, because we get there Thursday. So that's... Oop, my bad. Whoa, Sorry. dang, I just killer. Like... Oh, Jeez. So, yeah, 8th. Th- yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. What's up, Robert Van Hui? So. Oh, you totally turned off everything. I, turn, I turned the, um, wow. the TV off. Okay, never mind. Sorry. Dude, that's crazy. Good Thank job. You. Like, had it all set up and ready to go. I know. Why don't we just set this down so okay. you don't do that again? It's not that important to have it up. Okay. Um. Yeah. New York, Arkansas. Hello, guys. I see 81 in here. It's hot in here, too. It's 90, like really hot. 90 something. Yeah. There we go. What is going on? That's fine. No, it's not fine. I need it to work. Oh, I see. It's just take a minute. There you go. That's it. Oh, thank you. thank you. Accident happens in real life. You see that? Yeah. And now oh, you just gotta just. Yeah. Okay, so what's our Johnny? What's going on, fellas? How is everything? Cincinnati. What's going on? Yes, Alpine. Yes, what's up? What's up? So does Alpine make a 4K? 4K? No. Kansas, there will be... It's hot in Georgia. Yes, it's hot. It's it's hot in here, too. Good job, buddy. Did they say? No, it's... it's... But it's the HDMI. No, yeah, well, what I'm saying is it's, it's, it's killing me. It's not the end of the world, I know, right? Well, if we can't What's do up, a guys? show, we kind of suck. Huh. We can do a show. What's up? How is the new Alpine R series amp sound compared to the X series? I like the X series better than the R. No, you don't like it? No, I thought the R was way nicer. Really? Yeah. Mm. I like the X. Uh, hi guys, I have a 2015 Sierra and would like to know. Oh, sorry, it's gone. Uh, I have 2015 Sierra, would like to know if you measure from the door of the, sp- to the speaker or the tweeters to the dash from time alignment. Uh, we measure both. Uh, we normally go with the mid-range, like in the back, in the bottom, uh, but you can measure both. Uh, no, nothing? Hey, Christian, chill out yourself. Yeah, I'm rebooting. Can 
Yep, yeah, fellas with radio, you advise to use with iDataLink, Kenwood or Pioneer? Uh, Depends on if it has the premium features or not. Um, right. X-Man. Kenwood always has the most um, up-to-date capabilities. Yep. Yeah. Pioneer will always be a year behind. So that will be Kenwood. Have you guys done any 2017 Outlander? Uh, I, I don't think, so. think the Outlander. Yeah. That was the Highlander. Or something like that. Psh, man, probably. Uh, the, uh, both for Dinando. Dinando, <laughs> okay, that's, that was cool. What's up, Jason? Actually, I thought about that, but what then that probably goes against all their rules and they'd like lose their panties, so. What? I didn't break it, Fernando broke it. Now this thing is doing an update, so killer. Hey, let's see what happens here. Yeah, Dean breaks everything. I'm just trying to fix it. What's the best system to connect my factory without, uh, what? Without Sony on my 2018 F-150. Without Sony? Just the best the, system. The best system? The best system is just My depends. factory with, out Sony. So I mean, we've done both. Yep. We did a um, oh that lost all that tune. Oh that sucks. Twelve ball. Ah, uh, Fernando, I see that you using the twelve ball cordless solder in iron. Yes. Yeah. Um, Marzine, Aussie iron. Right the now. Milwaukee. No, no, the Milwaukee. Oh, we have the Milwaukee. Solder and iron on the other day video any thoughts i love it it's awesome uh you know you can tilt it you can do a lot of things it's awesome you know then just broke one i broke a, one this yeah, is the second one yeah yeah the heads break off really easy um this uh, one's kind of ready to break off the, so the best beginner dsp um for me it's easy to work uh the dsr1 is more friendly uh, but you can download the the the, 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 um, the software on the on your iPad or on your Galaxy. phone, yeah. And uh, try to play with it if you like it. We have two videos in the D in the um, rocker DSR playlist, mm -hmm. and then we also have two weeks ago we had it on here doing this, so it was pretty cool. Yep. All right, so let's get started, class, and welcome to the show. So today we have the Alpine. PXE 0850S. Now this guy is, this is a strange little little DSP yeah. amplifier. It has eight channels of 50 watts built into it, yep. along with um, 12 channels of DSP output. 12 channels, 12 whole channels. Mm -hmm. It also has a Bluetooth piece that it, it, it connects to. It has a DRC that goes up front. It has six presets that you can control through the DRC as well as the app. It has an optical input. It has six channels of what they call aux input. And then it has six channels of high level input. So it's got a ton of inputs. Now the 50 watts by eight, if you don't wanna use it, those correspond to the same first eight channels. So channel one of the output here is also channel one of the output here. So mm -hmm. you pick whichever one you wanna use and then you can use it. So if you don't wanna use the, the, the power in this, you don't have to. Yeah. And so there we go, okay. And then there's two different softwares that you can use. One is Windows based that you have to use. And I find this one to be the easiest to set this up with as well as you can use a iPod. portable device of some kind. It is an iPad app, so it does stretch and it does not rotate. So it's not like you can put this in the dash unless you're putting it like this in the dash. But you can access all the functionality from the app, which mm -hmm. we'll, we'll put up on the screen here. Now, a couple cool things about this DSP is that it will do a parametric EQ as well as a graphic EQ. It is totally selectable, mm -hmm. so we're gonna show you that. Mm -hmm. It has your eight channels, and you configure all your inputs independently, okay? Which I'll show you. What that means is that whatever feeds channel one on the 
high level input doesn't necessarily have to be what feeds channel one on the auxiliary input. So it has six channels of what they call auxiliary input. These are gonna be like RCA coming out of a radio, but they don't have to be. They can be anything along with the Tosh link, I'm sorry, along with your optical. So you get to choose what you want to be played on each channel along with the Bluetooth. So you actually are gonna go in and set all that stuff up. So that's pretty neat. Like I said, it has 12 channels. Now on the bottom here is gonna be your speaker layout for whatever you decide. We're gonna zoom in and show you closer views of all this. Mm -hmm. And those will correspond to these. Your time alignment is put in over here. You put in your delay, that's selectable. And then you have your cross over here, and then the channel you're working with. This section over here is for the mixer is what that's called for lining up your channels, and they have a link. The only beef I have with this is the link feature. The link is what takes, like say, channel one and channel two and puts them together. It is link all channels. So one through six are gonna go, or left is gonna link to right, it doesn't matter which channel you're on. So you can't like links three and four together, keep one and two separate. That's really the only thing that kind of bugs me. Not the end of the world, we'll get to it. What's up, Johnny? What's up, so Jason? Let's go ahead and zoom in and take a look at the closeness here. What's up, John? Michael. All right, so first off the bat, we have channel one. It comes, this is the default here. You have woofer, woofer, mid-range, mid-range, tweeter, woofer, tweeter. And then what you simply do is you go in, and we'll start at the bottom here, and we'll click on this. And we're gonna set this up for a, a seven channel system that's gonna have a center channel. So we're not gonna use 11, we're gonna set that to null. We'll set those to null, nine will go to null. We're gonna use all deck power, all the internal power. We have two, subwoofers in the rear deck of the car. We'll call this a left subwoofer, and we'll call this a right subwoofer. Oh, we'll go subwoofer, and we'll say right subwoofer here. We'll call this rear left, and we'll call it full range. Come back over to here, rear, rear, right, full range. We're gonna call three center, and we'll call it a full range center. We're gonna set four to null. We'll go back up to one, and we'll set as front, left. Now this is where it gets weird. For some reason, they gray out full range. So what you wanna do is pick mid tweeter if it is going to be a full range. And then do the same on channel two, front, right, Remember, every DSP has its little secrets of craziness, and that's one on here. Now down here in this portion is gonna be your crossover, which is gonna be reflected by this line right here. We're gonna go ahead and select link right now, because what that's gonna do is it's gonna copy the EQ from left to right, which is okay, because we wanna go ahead and set up our crossovers, and we want those to be linked left to right. As you notice, these speakers here are going to indicate. These are our front, there's our center. We can click on any one of these. So if we click on center, that'll go ahead and pull up to center. So either position will activate that crossover or that EQ. Default is Link Wix Riley at 24 dB. However, you have all three to choose from. That's right, three. So you have Link Wix Riley, Bezel, or Basil, and Butterworth. So you can pick either one of those you want. And then in all of those, you also have 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48 dB per octave slope. So let's go ahead and we'll put a slope on here real quick. So this is the center channel. And we wanna go, this is the high pass. We're gonna set this to 10,000. And we're gonna set this to, oh, no, we're gonna set this to 350, 350. Enter, and then we're gonna set this one to 10,000. We'll select enter. All right, so we have this nice little arc right here. Uh, we have tweeters up in the dash. We don't necessarily want the center channel to play those frequencies. We can adjust as needed, but let's say we want to change the type of slope we have for whatever reason. Did you see that moved it over? Still stayed at the same 350. It just changed the type of crossover. If we want to make it steeper, we're having some form of phase issue, we can go ahead and we can select 36, which made that sharper. 
We'll go all the way up to show the extreme at 48. Boom, it's, a, it's almost a drop off. 24 is really, this will keep phasing issues happening if you have another frequency at the same point. So it's a good place to be with the Linkwix Riley. Now we can come over here. This is the volume control. So we can pick, we can turn, we can mute it. So if we're tuning and we don't want this to make any noise, just go ahead and click on the speaker right here and that'll shut that channel off. Click it again, or we can drag the volume and just turn it down. This is the mixer level so that you can, if you want to turn that center channel or any channel down for that matter. So now we'll come over here and we'll go to this, which is the front, do a high pass of 80 hertz. And we'll put that back to 24, 24. Now every channel is a bandpass channel. So right now this is crossed over at 20,000 hertz, which is gonna be your high pass roll off right here. But every channel is a bandpass channel. You don't actually have to go in and turn on a bandpass. It doesn't matter. Every channel is bandpass on this. And basically what that means is just like we did that center channel where we had a bottom and we had a top, that's a bandpass. But we can check, we'll come over here to the rear and we'll set that also to 80 hertz. And we'll put those, those are 24. And then we'll do the subwoofers, click on the number. And we're gonna cross that over at 80 hertz also. All right, so there's our sub. So now what we've gone ahead is we've set up all the crossovers. They're parallel on each side. Now, if you want to do any equalization at this point that is going to be mimicked the same, so we have a left subwoofer and a right subwoofer, chances are good we're going to want them to do the same. At this point, you'd go and you'd do that equalization on your subwoofer. So let's say we wanted to come in and we wanted to put a boost at 32 hertz. We could raise that up. All right. Now, as we said, this is parametric, so we're going to go to the next thing up, which you do have to use the mouse to do that and you can increase the width of that so you can get a nice big fat bass sound or if you want to make it hit a little stiffer do away with the cue and then if we decide that 32 hertz isn't where we want to be no problem tap on that hit your arrow key and you can move that frequency wherever you want so you have 31 bands that are constantly variable of any frequency you want it to be so if we want that to be 45 hertz we can just put 45 in there we can adjust that cue up, something fierce. And now we have the Mobeta bass button that most of the amplifiers have, a 45 hertz, 12 dB boost. We can go all the way up to here and go crazy. Whatever you want to do there. All right. All right. So we'll Thank back you, up just a little bit. Audio control is easier for tuning. Yes, but there again, that's for you to decide. What we want to do is just get it in here and let you guys decide on your own what's easier, what's not easier. What's our adversary? What's our Bobby? He's not in the house. Now we'll go ahead and we'll unclick the link and we'll select Mixer. This is going to be our Mixer page. As we talked about, this is really probably the first thing you're going to set up after, we'll obviously set up the crossover, then go to the mixer. Make sure your volume's down while you're setting all this up. This is some of the setup that you actually can do on the bench, like just power the unit up and start working on it or working it on the trunk before you actually get these things. Mm -hmm. uh, could you explain setting up gains from a higher four or eight volt source to an amp or a source to the Alpine DSP seven volt point? Uh -huh. Well, Can you explain setting a gain from a higher 5 volt able source to an amp uh, or 5 volt to able source to an amplifier Seven or to point. an alpine DSP? Yeah. So most, point. most most alpines don't want a high, they want 4 volts. Yeah. That's it. They don't want anything higher than 4 volts. Alpine typically, their input section is kind of timid. I know on most of the amplifiers, like the PDX amplifiers, that was always the biggest problem. If you put like five volts to them, you could easily, if you didn't keep the gain at zero, you could easily just cause them to clip. And from overpowering, not from distortion. They just didn't like that big of a gain section. The whole purpose of a four volt output or higher is to give you double the signal with half as much noise. The more voltage you can put into a source unit, the less noise you should have. What's not taken in consideration of that 
theory is that if the higher voltage signal you're putting into it sucks, guess what? You just have a loud sucky source. Um, and that is the argument between balanced and non-balanced. Um, so balanced would be a high level system dedicated left and right output that doesn't share a ground with the chassis of the source. Unbalanced is just that, it's an RCA, it shares a ground with the chassis source. The balanced signal is your high level, which is can be 10, 12, 40, 24, whatever, how many voltage it's putting out. As long as you have a source that can take that voltage input, you can use it. That's what makes audio control nice, is they can take like 40 volts of input. So you have nothing to worry about. Other units have like a 10 or 11 volts of input, and that's all you can take on the unbalanced or high level side. Balanced wise, most of them are gonna tap out somewhere above five volts. Some will go up to eight volts, which is nice, mm -hmm. because if you have a factory system that is line level that is putting out a smaller voltage or a higher voltage, as long as you're below that, you're good. But that's, the idea is to decrease the noise floor by increasing the amount of signal coming into it. But if the signal sucks, it doesn't matter. All right, let's zoom in real quick and take Phil a look. is here. So you pick a channel. In this case, we have the subwoofer. Let's go up here to channel one and we'll start with the easy one. All right, so channel one. We have high level input here, and that is denoted by right here. This is your source input. So if we're coming over here, and let's say we are going to be running just this in out of a radio, we can pick aux, and now this is our aux input. So channel one is indicated, so this would be left front. Let's go over here to channel two, which should be right front, and that's highlighted correctly. Center channel, we want that to be part of channel one and part of channel two. This does not have an up mixer, so you're going to just blend it yourself, and you can do that. So we're going to run a tad bit of each one into it. You can control the volume, you can go all the way up to 100, you can do whatever you want, but if you want to lessen or increase, you can do that here. Then you go to three, and seven and eight, which are gonna be your rear, and seven has the subwoofer from this side, Let's go to the rear five, I'm sorry. Five is right, and then six is also gonna be right, which is there, and then your subwoofer should be, so what you're doing is you're taking your front and your rear on that side. So if we go back to high level input, and we go to channel one. See, this is where it got funky. High level channel one, it's looking at these two here. The reason why it's looking at this is because you can actually, let's say, run the front driver's door mid-base and the front passenger tweeters into one and two, and this is where your mixing will be done on this channel. So this channel is just gonna see these two channels. If we go over to channel two, it's doing the same thing. Your center channel, you can set up. Now it's playing all four. Now, if we just have a standard front rear four channel input, so we're not gonna want that. We're gonna bring this one back down to here. We're gonna do this guy, cut that down, cut that down, bring up channel two, and then that is going to be channel three. The sub, not gonna be there. We'll come here and we'll pull up channel four, and we'll turn down channel six, subwoofer, if we want to mono sum left and right, you could do that. You could play with the subwoofer to get the best signal possible out of it. And then the center channel, you can there again use a combination of your left and right input to get your center channel sound. So all this can be done and arranged, and then you can come down here and you can pick your, SP, your SP diff, which is your optical input, and you can choose left and right. Bluetooth, left and right. So this gives you a lot of options that you can do as far as the inputs and how you want them organized. I guess the color's off today. Uh, uh, thank you, Axeman. Uh, Fosgate amp don't like much more than six volt preamp voltage. So no old school single DIN CQs or line drivers. Yeah, well, I mean, line drivers nowadays are, you know, it's one of those things. It's uh, I think I think Derek 
Derek and Vega were talking about that the other day, and I, I agreed with their thought process. You want to have the minimum amount of stuff between your source unit and your amplifier. So if you go radio, line driver, DSP, amplifier, source, DSP, amplifier, seems a bit shorter, makes a little bit more sense. Now, that also depends on what you're trying to do. So if you have six sub amplifiers, a line driver makes a lot of sense. A lot of sense. So what do you do when you send five volt preamp to a five volt preamp in? Keep the gain all the way down. Remember, the gain is only on the amplifier or whatever unit you're going into to level match the input output voltage so that you can keep the floor noise to a minimum. If you overdrive the input, you get noise. If you underdrive the input, you don't get enough signal. Neither one is great. But the whole idea is to match one with the other. Mm -hmm. Years ago, back when I was first getting into it, they had DIN cables. And a DIN cable would come out of the source unit into whatever processor, out of the processor into the amplifier. There was no gain control. Everything was voltage match at a high voltage to reduce any noise. It was awesome. Unfortunately, if you didn't have an Alpine system, you couldn't put another piece into it. So you had to go brand. Every brand was trying to do their own thing. That didn't work out. So we settled on RCA. That's what it is. Nice. All right. So here we have RPN says, I want to get rid of my LC2i and replace it with either the Pioneer uh, where is it? Where is it? Uh, the Pioneer DQS 1000A okay. or the Danon Audio DSP 4.A. Which one do you recommend? Um, I'm gonna go with the Dayton Audio because it actually has the capability to do a DSP that's yeah. reasonable. Yeah. It's fewer mm -hmm. bands, it's 10 bands. We're gonna talk about the Dayton next week, and the reason why we're gonna do that is because very similar to this, mm -hmm. meaning they they come from the same platform. So, yeah. Now, like we said, this will do parametric and it'll do graphic. And a lot of you guys are still on like, what the heck are we talking about? Uh, oh, that's, that's the full cool. Cow. Yes, the Jetta. Nice. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Awesome. So let's go ahead and we on this processor because it has both. We can give you a great visual demonstration of what a parametric and what a graphic EQ is. So let's zoom in and take a look at that. So we're on the center channel right here, and we've gone ahead and given it a boost. And because there's something weird happening in this frequency range, which is 3150. Now we've come up here and we're like 3150, we, we move it a little bit and we'll go, and we can, we can move it left and we can move it right and it's moving ever so slowly because it's in the higher frequency range so it's just moving a little bit so you can see it moving all right so we found the spot now we're going to go to our cue and we can narrow the cue as you can see it's we, that's it that's where the problem is we can narrow that out we can make it a little wider the wider we make it the more frequencies to the left and right it's going to fix so with this one frequency that we've picked here, we can move it this way or this way, we can affect the frequencies to the left and right, we can pull it up, we can pull it down, and we can make it narrower or wider. Real simple at that point. Let's go over here and we'll switch this to the graphic EQ, yes. All right, so we're gonna go to that same frequency right here, and we can push up. And that's all we can do. So if our problem is here, great. If our problem is at the next frequency over, great. But if our problem isn't there, it's between these, well, we can't do anything about that. All we can do is push up around it. All right, so we've now made three adjustments and hopefully those are the adjustments we needed in order to fix that. We can't make this narrow, so if that middle frequency is too high, we want to bring that down, okay, and make this nice M shape. Well, if that's still too narrow, we can't, we can't do anything about that. But that doesn't mean all is lost. So if you're using an RTA, it's typically going to have 31 bands across it. And when you look at those cool little things going up, let me show you what I'm talking about here, because why not? Hold on. One second, please. 
So if we're looking at an RT8, it's got these things going on across it. Okay, so over here we have an issue. I can literally grab this band, this band, this band, this band, and raise those bands up here just by coming over to this guy here and raising it up or lowering it down, whatever I need to do. So, or in this case, raising it up to back to the zero because we picked a crappy crossover point. And then I can go to the next frequency and I can do the same thing. And then I've fixed that problem now. So it's real simple. From that aspect, it's super easy when you're using 31 bands if you don't get the concept of moving in a parametric. And then if you hit this button again, all settings will be lost. So you have to make a decision at the get-go whether you want to use parametric or graphic. It's like yes, boom, they're all gone again. What's up, Sebastian? What's up, what's up, what's up? Uh, what's up? Oh, thank you, Lou. Uh, Let's go to the speaker over here. Thanks from Canada. No, I'm not a sleeping man. Now over here you have your polarity, so if you accidentally got a speaker wrong, you can come over here and you can hit the zero button. It'll flip at 180 degrees out of polarity. Over here is where you're gonna put in your input delay, meaning your distance between you and the speaker. If you come down and you select inches or centimeters and then put in your number, and then put in all your numbers, click on each speaker individually, put in all your numbers, it'll do all the math for you it'll switch it over to milliseconds. So once we hit return and get out of here and go to the next speaker, it's gonna go back to milliseconds and we go back, it's gonna default to milliseconds. Go ahead and do that math and put that millisecond number in there for you. All right, so Drew say, what 6.9 component set do you recommend to replace in a Boston Acoustic six speaker system in a Chrysler 300C? Uh, actually, Kenwood, Kenwood. I was gonna say uh, Kenwood just came out Kenwood with Excellent a came plug out and with play, a plug and play. Yep. Uh, There's no connectors, but they're made to go into that system. Yep. So go back and watch. We have a video talking about the Kenwood Exelon six by nine components just came out. Mm -hmm. um, go check that video out yep. and see if that's kind of what you're looking for. Hey Dean, what makes the R series um, sound better than the X? When we were at Knowledge Fest, they played around with both of those for us. The Air Art, you know, I've never been a fan of the new X Type. I think they really kind of did a dishonor, did a disservice to the current, you know, like the PDX V9 and all that series by coming out with those. I think it's more personal than anything. You know, it's like if you decide you don't like something, you just don't like something. I don't always have to be on bias. I like the way the new R types look. They look way cooler. There's only a, a four channel and a mono block right now. They have not come out with the five channels, so mm -hmm. we'll just wait and see how that goes. Is there a difference between yes, the ATT remote and the AM remote wire on the wire harness? ATT is attenuation, that's a mute wire. Remote wire is a what turns things on and off. So the ATT wire is to mute the radio. What that would be used for is if you're doing something that has like OnStar and you want the radio to stop talking or stop playing music while the OnStar person is talking to you, you'd connect that wire and that would mute the stereo so it wouldn't do that. I'm just trying to this one. I just got the 82 and the JL 606 BXI and sound highs are way too loud. I have the laptop set up to tune the amplifier, but not sure what to change to lower the sound. Any help? Okay, so let's talk about what's what on an RTA real quick so that we kind of get an idea of what frequencies we want to look at that cause what kind of headaches for us. Anything on this side of the RTA, so that's going to be 20, 25, 30, 40, 50, 60, 80, 100, 125. All those frequencies, those are subwoofer. When you get into that 80, 100, 125, 160, 200, that would be mid bass. If you're at 125, let's say all the way up to 1000, that's going to be mid range. When you're talking, let's say between 400 and 2500, that's going to be high frequency mid-range and then when you're in this 3150 all the way up to 20,000 that's gonna be highs treble real highs 
the higher, the more you move to this side, the louder the tick sounds. The more you are in the middle, that's where the mid range and vocal are going to be. I will tell you when you're on this side here, everything should remain below the zero line. When you're doing a EQ, the big thing that everyone wants to do is come over here, grab a frequency and do this. They want to do this and they want to come over here and they want to do this. This is not how you set up an EQ because this is boost. That's 6 dBs of boost. That's how you blow speakers. When you're setting up your amplifier, you want to do it the opposite way. You actually want to pull down the EQ here. So the best way to think about that is to gain up and pull down. Meaning whatever your lowest frequency is that you're worried about, let's say it's somewhere in here, gain up to that frequency, then pull all these down to match the level of that. When you do that, your gain will be fine. You won't be overdriving the input of the amplifier. You won't be doing anything silly like that. You'll just be, because otherwise what's gonna happen is, let's say, let's say this guy right here is where the problem is. You're gonna pull this one up to here. You're gonna introduce noise, lots of noise lots and lots of noise because that's that's coming now from the processor you're boosting that signal out of the processor into the amplifier as opposed to just setting the amplifiers gain output voltage output where it needs to be and then pulling down everything else so and the question is is if i'm getting a lot of high frequency rumble there's a couple different things or high frequencies this area here is where you'd want to concentrate you're gonna need some form of an RTA. I'm here. Hey Siri, how you doing? So like this is the audio control app for the um, iPad. It uses either their iTest mic or just the mic that's in it. There's several free RTA apps that you can download to your phone. You play pink noise. Pink noise sounds like static. It goes That's it. Pull the mic out of the bag. The peak noise is a weighted noise that allows it to look flat. Uh, it takes in consideration a couple things, but basically it's going to look flat across there. And then that's where you're going to set up your curve. Now, you, you don't need it to be flat. It's, it's going to have some shape to it. Most of the time when you're looking at a, an RTA that's playing back music, it's going to be a little high in the mid bass because we like mid bass. It's going to be a little low in the middle here where we hear really well because we don't need to amplify the frequencies we hear. You're going to have a bump somewhere here in the mid-range and then it's going to taper off like this is into the treble because treble, believe it or not, you don't need a lot of power on your tweeters for your ears to know what the heck is going on with those. It just, yeah, um, it's really loud. All right, so what size wire will you use for that uh, DSP? Power, uh, power and ground. Wire? Yeah. 18, 18 gauge. Power and ground. Power and ground uh, takes a 12 gauge takes a 12 gauge. Yeah, it's a 12 gauge power and ground. It's just an IC power chip. It's basically like the 455U, which is their universal amp. It's a little bit smaller than that, built into the amplifier. All right, so let's go back here and we'll switch to a... What's up, first time show I caught. Thank you, thank you for watching, man. So for those of you guys that run the Dayton, you're immediately going to be looking at this going, hey, uh, that looks familiar. And it does. Hmm. It is a little different, though. And next week when we have the Dayton, you'll see why. Here's your 31 bands of equalization. Joe. I'll zoom in a little bit just so you guys can see that again. Sorry. On the Dayton, it has 10. And then we'll talk about that Thank next you, week. buddy. Now, if you notice here across the top, this is your channel selection here. So you can pick whatever channel you want to EQ. And if you'll notice, like that EQ curve is changing there. I'm sorry, the crossover curve is changing. And then here's all your frequencies. You gain up, gain down, reset. Output, this is where you set up your crossover. Home, here's your presets. So if you have this plugged in and you wanna change presets, you can just simply press one of these guys here. You're gonna have six presets. It's controllable on the DRC. When it's lit up, there's choices here. But basically, you have mute, you have source, and you have preset. And then you have the main volume control. Master volume goes all the way up to 61, or 60. I thought it was 61. You'd think I'd know I have this one in my car. If you come over here to delay, 
there again, once you set it up, these are your 12 channels. So you're gonna set it up just like we did on the other thing and pick which channels you want to be aware. You can share, you can save. You can select inches, just like millisecond inches, go in and add the delay. Then you tap on the speaker you want and then it'll pull that up and you can slide over your inches and then you can fine tune with the plus and minus. Mixer, there again, the mixer is set up just like it is on the computer. The reason I like the desktop over the app is mainly for that EQ. The EQ, when you're using the desktop app, is a little bit easier to, because you have all 31 bands there to play with and it's a little bit easier to see. Mm -hmm. When you're on the EQ here, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta scroll left and right, you gotta do this, and that's kinda, uh, and you can't zoom in. What's up, Scotty? What's up, Eric? How you guys doing? All right, what are we having here? What is the web page to get a box, a Foxbox order so I can order it? Foxbox.com. Uh, Foxbox, Fox Acoustic Boxes. Is it Fox Acoustics? Fox Acoustic Boxes, All right, yes. look that one up. Yep. Look Score. up Waterfall Curve. <laughs> <laughs> I think he said that uh, his neighbors uh, work for AMP. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. They must, yeah. Yeah. Um, What's well, out from Houston, Texas? Okay, what does that say? All right. What are we having here? I don't know, you're going too fast. No. Uh, this was listed as okay. Um, yeah. Scope of signal input and output RCA. I think it's the same. The same. Oh, question. is that the same yeah, question? Just like okay. Confirming. Okay. Yeah. This was listed in the A50 spec scope of signal input output RCA input 7.5 volt, high level 24 uh, RCA output. So that's basically telling you that it'll take. It'll take a decent amount of signal input. One hidden truth about this guy right here. This is actually, this is new to the US market mm -hmm. this year, but this has actually been in Alpine's lineup for a couple years overseas. Um, and it doesn't look like anything else that Alpine makes. Coincidence? Hey. I'm just saying. Um, well, thank you for watching. Finally got to watch the live show. Here you go, man. You've been in the um, <laughs> in the live show and you watch it right now. No, I'm, uh, I'm looking at I'm looking at uh, Joe. What's the fox say? Ring, oh, ding, ding, I know. Ding, ding, no, but that's ding. Brian Smith. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, is the uh, Mo Solutions guy? Brian Smith. Yeah. No. No. Schmidt. 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 Not Smith. Oh, oh, I think that was. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Good one. Yeah. Okay. You will love the Fox Box. Yeah, you will oh, love the Fox Box. The uh, Fox Box. So is I will awesome. say this about the Fox Box. Guys, I recommend the ten What's inch up, Mark? enclosure size, not the twelve inch enclosure size. Just because you can go with the twelve doesn't always mean you should go with an, yep. uh, a twelve. Uh, any way to fix sub lag on certain songs? It just depends. Um, like check the time alignment and see what the heck is going on there. But. It, you, you're gonna have to look at the DSP and see what it's doing. There's a reason why it's lagging, or sounds like it's lagging. Maybe if it's a ported box, the, it's tuned wrong? Um, or you just don't like the way ported boxes sound. Uh, it also depends on what side the woofer is. If it's you know a big 12-inch ported enclosure, and you're more of a 10-inch sealed guy, it's gonna sound that way. So it could just be that. Yeah. All right, uh, hey guys, check the remote wire on my second amp, it's good. I still have the same problem. One amp is coming on, the other don't. Did you check the ground? I, I don't know if or you the have voltage. the same ground. Well, what's the voltage on the amplifier? Yes. I mean, uh, the remote turn on voltage might be fine, but what's the voltage at the amplifier? Uh-huh. Other thing too, is anytime you have a bad amplifier, take the amplifier out of the car and try to just power it up on the bench. Uh, or underneath, you know, tap on into the battery, the battery the yeah. hood. Mm -hmm. uh, all you need is a car battery to turn on an What's amp. That, you can jump the remote turn on wire over to, you know, over and turn the amp on and see if you get sound. Um, you can pick up a power supply. You only need a 5 amp, 10 amp power supply to turn an amplifier yeah. on a bench. 
you're not running it and so you can pick up one of those for 40 bucks on amazon actually probably cheaper if you get just a power supply without a cord aftermarket stereo all recommendation options for a chevy impala 2017 with eight inch touch uh what a subwoofer that's a chevy cruise it's the same impala uh i don't know if you actually scotch or Pest metra metra, yeah. metra ba make the dash kit for that dash part. it's going to be expensive that's yeah. for sure mm -hmm. um i don't know you may be able to use the ant pro gm61 with that one uh, check even though it doesn't have bows it may it may turn on it may not you might have variable voltage coming out of that because i know like in the cruise it did have variable voltage coming out of it and in for, which case we just put on some rcas and call it a day and for radio i mean it depends what kind of features you're actually looking for you know like apple carplay or just a regular radio um you got plenty so in the mini cooper um man there's that's a tough one um because the subs are underneath the seats is that a two-door because i know in the two-door you have some room behind the side panels inside the side panels because that's actually where they put their ANC oh, oh, oh. amplifiers in the side the side panels. Yeah. But I think in that we typically would go in the in the well in the back with the amplifiers. Yeah. Uh, all right. So David, say, do you guys work with morale speakers? Do you recommend them? Yes. Yeah. Here. That's yeah. Mm -hmm. We got a bunch of them. <laughs> stack of them. We, we talk about morale all the time. Uh, Big we fan. sell tons of them. Uh, right that in the bottom box. one. Box. Right there is yep. a set of the brand new carbons, mm -hmm. three-way set. Those the are the shallow ones. ones. Yeah, pretty yeah. phenomenal. All right, so any questions about DSP would be a great time to ask them. I think we've covered pretty much everything I wanted to hit on this guys here. Yes, uh, shallow T1 tans on the Fox box. Yes. Get the grills. Get the grills. Gotta have yep. the grills. Yep. Gotta have the grills. Definitely. But they, they sound, sound really amazing good in there. Yeah, thanks for your help. No problem. Well, uh, would it be a bad idea to attempt to utilize the 4x6 dash locations of GMC's Jimmy with a coaxial with components in the doors? We'll get a DSP. Um, so if they're on their own channel and you can control their output, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. If you're savvy with tools, you could actually make a mount to fit a 6.5 up there. Or you could just do a three way set where you put the mid base in the door and the the like a three-way set so we put a mid base in the door the mid range and the tweeter up in the top of the dash that also work ever looked at the helix dsp Not yet. it's on the list i am it's on I the am. list do the Vir virtues nano slam i don't slam i mean but yes they have a very strong mid base and it's almost magically sounds delicious so any reason they don't use dolby dts chips with the pxe price just comes down to price price and performance um the idea behind this is a certain price point they didn't even really want to bring it into the usa per se but right now dsp is so hot they really didn't have a choice so it was like hey um i would say it's better than a dsr1 it's just different you know the dsr1 is awesome because there again everything is controlled right from the pad it's it, every DSP has a plus and a minus. That's why mm -hmm. we're doing this is so that we can focus on showing you guys the software. Everyone can download this stuff. This yeah. this is down. You yeah. don't have to have the DSP. It's not plugged in. Mm -mm. Um, you can download it. You can play with it. You can see if it makes sense to you. You can do the same with the DSR1 software. You can pretty any much DSP. download any DSP yeah. software and play yeah. with it. Uh, you know, the only advantage we have is that we've actually put these things in cars and we use them so explaining them and trying to answer questions about them makes it a little bit easier if you've had the opportunity then you know you can go hey why does it do that can you use aftermarket amps can you use the dsp amp for rear fill yeah so all right so for those of you just tuning in what's that jersey that makes this guy really special it has eight channels by 50 watts along with the 12 channels of dsp output 12 channels that's insane by the way 12 channels the first one through eight channels of either output or RCA are the same. So, for example, if you're going to run tweeter on one and two to a four channel amp, so you're gonna run, you're gonna go active front. So one and two is gonna be the tweeter output. Three and four is gonna be the mid base output. Five and six, if you wanted that to run rear speaker output, 
like, because you don't have an amp to power them? Yeah, just come out of five and six of the amplified output, power up those rear speakers. You can't bridge it. I mean, you can't bridge the internal amplifier. You have to use channel for channel. But yes, five and six, then you wouldn't plug an RCA into here. You'd connect up in here. Then seven and eight, let's say that's going to go off to your subwoofer amp. So yeah, now this is powering your rear fill and your golden. Thank you for watching, man. Thank you for watching. All right, let's see. Uh... You do get what you pay for. That's always true in life, and that's a life lesson. Oh, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. I had a Helix DSP, too. For five years now, I can't have system without. Yeah, you know, and that's yeah. one of the things, the reason why we're spending so much time trying to talk about DSP mm -hmm. is we're trying to take some of the scary out of the DSP because it's computer software. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's a lot of, I mean, seriously, that's like the craziest thing you've ever seen, right? I mean, holy, there's 31 bands, that's uh, 93 adjustments that are continuously variable that can be made oh on, on times 12. Yeah, <gasps> exactly. But it doesn't have to be scary because there again, using the parametric EQ, right now we have one band, two band, three band, four bands of adjustment made. Out of 31 bands, we've adjusted four. And I can tell you right now, after setting up tons of parametric EQs, typically you make five, maybe six adjustments. That's it. Because you can move left, you can move right, you can go wide, and you can go up or down. Makes it really cool. What's up, car gaff? Now, if you're looking for easy, Super easy, that's gonna be the auto control. You can go back and watch that video, you'll see what we're talking about. It's super easy. Big Man um, 120 next week. Yeah, that's next week we're gonna be talking week. about the Dayton because it's very similar to the Alpine. Yeah. Almost scary similar to the Alpine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you think should I run a whole new power wire for the sake of amp? I have an amp testing it at work. I have um, an amp testing at work, it's fine. Uh, it all depends on whether you're having a voltage issue. So yeah, yeah. like you know, I mean, you have like two fuses for each amplifier, like <laughs> a fuse for each amplifier, or it's one fuse, a distribution block. It's just like I like booty bass or ramp. Two power <laughs> wires never hurts. One zero gauge, two four gauge, yeah. whatever whatever moves you. Yeah. Just so you have the right size for that. <laughs> okay. Booty bass or rap? I like mm. rap. Well, booty, booty, booty. Love me some Perrier. Like booty, 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 booty all the time. I like um, hmm, I don't know. I probably like booty music. I mean, if I was to think about it, I would probably pick the booty music more so than the rap. Yeah, it's I mean, cool. I'm an old school rap Drop guy. It. Drop it. I like old school rap, but then I again, know. I also like, you know, I have booty music from back then. I don't Power really metric. think they What's do that. Parametric. What's that, Jason? Uh, I can send you my VXI for testing. Not a bad idea. Ever, ever, what does that say? Ever been blind by the RTA? The RTA. Um, I wouldn't say blind by the RTA. I've been, you know, in some situations, software just causes all kinds of grief. Uh -huh. And that's more the, I, I think you can get a headache more so than a kicker, IQ DSP, or Alpine DSP, or audio control. There again, that's it's for different. you to decide, man. Yeah. That is for you to decide. Every each, software is each different. Each one has a different feel, and mm -hmm. each one does a different thing. Yeah. So the purpose will be the same, you know, make you sound... Uncle Luke, heck yeah. Amazing, yeah, yeah. but they're different things, definitely. Two live crew, baby. Live uh, crew. Okay. Yes, you have been bit away, man. What the heck? But glad you're back. Uh, glad Joe, everything's good. If you one of your speakers blown, you probably have the gain like too high. Or the so to, or the crossovers, yeah, exactly. So try to turn it down. Check your crossovers, um, and you go from there. Uh, just because you can go with a twelve doesn't mean you should. That's what she said. <laughs> nice, Chris. And there again. Uh, if you guys want to see more about this guy as far as what this is capable of doing, if you go to the playlist... Alpine? Uh, no, no, it's not in the Alpine. Well, it is in the Alpine, but, but it's also in, the in Car Lab. The Car Lab. Mm -hmm. We did a, a two-part, I think a two-part Car Lab on this because this is what I'm currently running in the Camaro. I'm using the 50 watts output to power up the center, the left, right, front, rear, 
and sub. <laughs> so this is what I'm currently playing with at the oh, moment. Oh, that's awesome, Robert. Yeah. Miami study booty base. Miami style booty base. Yeah, yeah. I actually Love have uh, Miami's. My uh, yeah, I have a Miami disc. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. That, it's way uh, before your DSP time. or really nice head unit. I want a big DSP. Or both. Oh wait, but yeah. yeah. I mean, that's okay. My... So it all depends on what you're trying to do. Yeah. It, okay, so like this has this has all the inputs you could possibly want. It's got a fiber input. It's got the auxiliary input. So if you have a source unit that has a Toshlink output or the capability to have a Toshlink output, okay, then you can go digitally directly into this. So if you're running your um, DSD files or your high res files of Black, any kind, uh, yeah, you can come out into this, out to this, to your amplifiers. Perfect. Mm -hmm. The, the source unit is really, and this has a volume knob, so it has a DRC, so you can control it here. And there's a lot you can, there's a lot you can do with this little guy. This is one of those weird products that has probably one of the coolest DSPs as far as usability, because it's as difficult or as easy as you want. It's got tons of channels of output. It's got internal power. It has 12 channels. Yep. It has a fiber optic. It has high level. It has auxiliary, six channel. It has a DRC. Mm -hmm. It will do Bluetooth. It's small. It just, it, it does everything, but it's like still, what am I gonna put it in? Exactly. So yeah, it's, it's one of those weird pieces you can do no wrong by buying it because it'll there again plug in anything you want yeah, yeah. it's just how you want to use it what's up Luis uh, thank you on the podcast oh you're welcome uh it does matter if you mix brands when you are doing a system it's better to stay with with the same brand um no I mean you probably like a really nice high-end radio and you want a different DSP or different speakers so so if I had to build my dream system mm -hmm. okay as far as source unit goes and I'm not like I don't need a video screen okay I don't no, I don't, don't I don't need a backup camera I don't need any of that no. up front it's no. neat and it's yeah. cool yeah. and don't get me wrong I'm gonna put one in because I need it in order to use the kit that I have thanks but I'm Monster. buying a Sony GS9 because I want <laughs> The yeah. source unit of gods. Yes. Okay. I want that amazing high res. I got high res files, people. Mm -hmm. I want to play them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a fiber output. I can go into this, plug it in, and I can go out to my amps. And I'm done. Mm -hmm. I'm happy. I'm, exactly. I'm living the Vita Loca. I feel that's the same thought process behind a lot of guys that buy the PRS 80. They just want this super clean. But a lot of those guys I've found are kind of scared of DSP. It's like, oh, mm, I, I like what it has in it. Yep. And it's like, okay, that's cool. I mean, it's not like it's bad. DSP never gets old. EQs never get old. I mean... And I don't the, think it's going to get old. The Kicker Q class over there that we showed two weeks ago. Five years five old. Years, or, it's five-year-old yeah. DSP software yeah. that is still kicking butt today. Like, there's still nobody that makes what that amp can do. Nobody. Nobody yeah. makes it. Yep. It's, it's yep. that They're the only guys, and that's insane that no one else is going, oh, hey... That oh let's do that no they don't so okay uh, this one this who was is... your worst customer <laughs> nobody okay so when you're playing big noise uh, and adjustments. make an adjustments on the factory radio settings being a flat zero do you still go and adjust the trouble on the bass and the factory radio after you're done nice winner winner chicken dinner all right so great so question tony tony from uk so now we go ahead and we put this amazing oh we spend two hours playing with this and we get in there and it's like yeah we got preset one because you know we just spent two hours we're definitely not doing a two or three you got crack okay we're happy. We love it. We're just like, we've listened to it for two days now, and we're like, yeah. mm, man, I love this. Then you play that track that was recorded kind of, you know, crappy. And you're yeah. like, where did my amazing trouble go? Where, I, what, what happened? You need what is called a global EQ. And this is one of the things when we talked about the DSR-1 that drove me crazy, because they called it basic and advanced, and I was mm -hmm. like, this is the dumbest thing ever. The reason why they did that is because they think everyone is kind of like, they don't understand the term global EQ. Yeah. A global EQ, 
acute uh, a global EQ is an EQ that covers everything so I have basement trouble on my radio or I have a deck that has a 13 band EQ or whatever and I'm playing a song and I'm like man I wish I wish I got a little bit more tick out of that all right so let's look at our options one we go back into here mm -hmm. and we go to channel one boost some treble frequencies channel two boost some treble frequencies center channel boost rear channel boost okay you, you get the idea oh, and i've just screwed up my perfect curve all right so i make it a preset two yay or or i just go to my radio and i go treble two done and then when i go back to that song i was listening to before that you know the, the old stuff down. i go treble zero so yes you can still use your basement in treble what we always tell people is that if you're using your basement in treble and you find you're turning it up past three, come back. We need to readjust something. We got something wrong or we need to figure out maybe different crossover points or different speakers or something along those lines because there should be no reason that you're going that loud. You're wanting something that it's not capable of doing. But just doing small adjustments here and there on your source unit to make things sound better, that's okay. It's called Global EQ. It's a wonderful thing. It makes life better. So don't be afraid to do that. <sighs> what else yeah. we got? We got all right. Get out of here. So we're gonna get out of here. Uh, we sell tons of DSP all the and time. install it all, all the, the time. time, like a all lot. Time. All right. So Jason, say have a great night, gentlemen. Jason, keeper of the See time. You, guys you can there. find Jason at Stereo Kings on YouTube, or if you're in Oregon, go over and say yep. hi. We recommend Fast Rings. That's def definitely. Now it uh, is Saturday, which means it's the end of the week, which means don't do anything stupid this weekend. Monday, we got a big show. Monday, we got. Kicker L7T mm -hmm. that's going to be here. It's going to debut on the Facebook show on Monday. We're going to have Carlos Jimenez from Kicker mm -hmm. here talking about it. So it won't just be us going, hey, what do you think? It's going to be somebody from Kicker. So that's going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. Other thing is we also, we'll talk about that next yep. week. Yep. So All right. see you so guys on Monday. Monday, tune in. 6.30. Facebook, 6.30. And if you're on YouTube and you're like, I don't do Facebook. Well, then watch Tuesday on the rebroadcast here on YouTube. You guys have a super safe kick butt weekend. And we'll see you guys back here Monday, Saturday. Bye.